Namaste and welcome, dear friends and family. Welcome to our video where we explore the classical interpretation and classical origins of the chakras. So let's begin with our Shanti Mantra. Take a few breaths and center yourselves here. Take a breath in. Om Sahana Bhavatu Sahana Bunaktu Sahavir Yam Karavavahe Te Jasvinavi Te Mastumavi Vishavahe Aum Shanti 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 And as you exhale, release the pose. So let's look at chakras. We probably all have some familiarity with chakras and if it's something that's part of your practice or part of your healing practice, you probably um, have explored this topic, not only the Hindu system of chakras, but, but others. But today we're going to look at chakras from the classical yoga point of view. Now, when we start exploring chakras, what we find very interesting is that no matter what language you speak, if you are not reading the original Sanskrit, you know that your translation and even the transliteration is going to show some influence and bias of the language and the culture that is being translated into. So just take that into account as um, you explore the chakras. Chakras were first mentioned in the Rig Veda. The Rig Veda is one of four Vedas or books, which is one of the oldest surviving, surviving written uh, books in the world, in history. We also see um, around 700 or 800 BCE that Upa, in the Upanishads, we see mentions of chakras. Now the Upanishads came after the Vedas. Some of the more known Upanishads that you will find mentions of chakras are listed here, the Sri Jabala Darshana Upanishad, the Kudamini Upanishad, and the Yoga Shika Upanishad, also the Shandila Upanishad. Even here, you can see in my presentation that I am using a certain English translation of the Sanskrit script that is not uniform across other references. So as you do your own research, you, you have to sort of um, keep digging deep, okay? Um, later on in the 10th century, we see Guru Goraknath, which I think some of the yogis here probably are familiar with. He also mentions it in his Samhita. We also see the mention of chakras in Ayurveda. Now Ayurveda is as old as the Vedas. And so it's a very ancient holistic medical system. And we do see mentions of chakras there, specifically the Atharva Veda. Now, many of the Western translations and understandings of the concept of chakras came during the Tantric period, which is more or less what we call the medieval period of, of India. Some of the um, <clears throat> Western translations that you probably have read or heard about uh, come from Sir John Woodruff. He had the first English translation in this, from the 16th century literature. He published in 1919, so this is the really early, early 1900s. Um, there weren't a lot of Sanskrit English scholars at that time. So he was taking this knowledge from not always perfect or 100% translations, let's say. Other authors at that time are C.W. Ledbetter, Alice Bally, and Madame Blavatsky. Later on um, in the 1970s, you may have heard of Christopher Hill. He wrote The Nuclear Evolution, where he talked about chakras and colors. So as we look at our study and research into what are chakras, I'd like you to remember 
the same practice to your capacity. So that means not only your physical capacity, but your intellectual and, and emotional capacity. So for some of us, we feel comfortable if, um, reading English translations from other English authors. For some of us, we feel comfortable going back to the Sanskrit and then trying to understand from that script and those concepts what chakras are. But everyone has a different starting point. So start where you are comfortable and that will be authentic to you and then just go from there. So we come to the important questions. Are chakras actual physical entities? And do they have actual specific characteristics? Or are chakras a mental construct of our focus and concentration? So this is really important. When we start looking at these questions, we also look at what kind of actual words and definitions are we using. I like to uh, go back to a lesson I learned many, many years ago. I was talking to a, an experienced yogi and she says, I don't do yoga, I practice yoga. And after she spoke to me in, in those words and got me thinking, I started meeting other people who are practitioners of yoga. They don't do yoga, they practice yoga. And so for your own self, think about that. What does that mean to do or to practice? What does that imply about yoga when you do it or you practice it, right? And you can have that same nuanced feeling and observance when we think about chakras. Now chakras are a system that represent both subtle and gross energies. So that means they have subtle and gross qualities also that we can actually name. Some of the difference between physical gross and subtle is that in the physical gross uh, realm, we have actual measurable quantities and qualities. In the subtle realm, we cannot measure the, the quantity or the quality of the characteristics when it's on the subtle plane. But what we can do is see the consequences of the movement of subtle energy in the physical world. So we see the consequences of it. Chakras from a classical point of view are related to one of the Indian Shadarshan, Samkhya philosophy. In Samkhya philosophy, um, a very important element is the five elements. So the five elements in Samkhya philosophy, and you find it in Ayurveda, you find it in yoga, are earth, water, fire, air, and ether. And so these five elements are described in the philosophy from a subtle point of view and from um, a gross point of view. And so they will have characteristics and qualities. We can also look at the chakras from a point of view of spirituality and spirituality cannot be measured per se, but we can see the manifestation of spirituality, which is in spiritual attainments or milestones in your life. According to Tantra, the main purpose of a chakra system is to function as a template for Nyasa. Nyasa is the installation of mantras and deities in the chakra system. So when they say installation, that means a mental focus of a mantra in those chakra positions or if we're reciting Sanskrit alphabets or other mantras that have a resonance with that particular element, which is related to that particular chakra that is installing or bringing that mental focus. So we are prescribing a type of observance to the chakra. That's what they mean by niyasa. And that is part of the tantric definition of chakra meditation. So in the practice portion of our workshop, you will notice that you are practicing niyasa when you recite and write the bija letter that goes with each chakra, right? You're installing 
that particular resonance through the alphabet that corresponds with a certain chakra. The same thing when we are reciting and writing the letters of the petals on the different chakras. And as you move along and come into the Purusha Mantra, it's the same thing, but we're doing it on the body. We are reciting the Sanskrit alphabet and actually touching different parts of our body. So that is all Nyasa. I wanted to show, oops, excuse me, how did that happen? Let me get back to the, this point. We've been talking about chakras within the Vedas and Samhitas mentioning uh, Upanishads, but let's look at a timetable and, and the relationships between these literary works. So there are four Vedas. They are known as the Rig Veda, Samaveda, Yajur Veda, and the Atharva Veda. And I, I've written them, them here in the chart. Now, each of these Vedas is broken up into four categories. So each, uh, the, each Veda has these four parts to it. Now, the Samhita are the mantras and the prayers that go with that particular Veda. The Aranyakas are a description of the rituals. The Brahmanas are commentaries on those rituals. So it's written by other people. The Upasanas then describe um, the worship and the devotion and the spiritual part that is related to that Veda. Afterwards, we have something called Vedanta. Vedanta is the culmination of all of this wisdom here. The Vedanta is made up of hundreds of Upanishads. So a lot of times when you're, when you're um, exploring what are chakras, you'll come across, oh, this reference is to a sam Samhita. This reference is to an Upanishad. So now you know what the relationship is between them. So I think I'll end it there. And I will meet you on our next video. So let's share the pranava together, bringing our hands together. Take a breath in. Um, shanti, shanti, shanti. Namaste. Thank you everyone for joining me and I'll see you in our next video. Thank you, have a good day.